All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Altcoin Daily. My name is Aaron. You might be on Christmas vacation, but let me tell you something. Bitcoin never sleeps. In this video, I'm going to clue you in everything you need to know regarding Bitcoin in 2020, heading in to 2021, including what notable players in the space are saying, notable investors actually in the legacy space are saying regarding Bitcoin as an investment. I want to clue you in as to JP Morgan strategist explains how 600 billion could move into Bitcoin in the coming years. This was eye opening. Now, besides that, I want to talk about, well, it's kind of an Ethereum story, but it's really Bitcoin cryptocurrency seems like such a sure thing at this point. Should I be taking out a personal loan? I see some people doing it. And of course, you know, that's you have to consult a financial advisor. Videos on this channel are as if you and I are having a beer talking cryptocurrency. So I'm not giving you financial advice. But you know, we'll talk about it as if we're having a beer. And by the way, if you're tuning in today, let me hear from you in the comments. I want to know who is watching, especially if you see this in the first couple hours when it comes out, because I'll be responding. I want to talk about Bitcoin. I want to talk about altcoin news. I want to talk about Raul Paul and his recent uh, tirades and rants that he's been on recently. Not rants, but just tweet storms regarding not just Bitcoin, but altcoins. And it's been making some waves in the community. Get to some DeFi stuff at the end. So guys, if you appreciate us coming at you every day, give the video a like and let's start right here. The wealthy are jumping into Bitcoin as the stigma around cryptocurrency fades. This headline, keep in mind, it's not from an Ivan on tech. It's not from a crypto zombie. It's not from a Pierre Richard. It's not from Altcoin Daily, although we are reporting on it. It is from Bloomberg, more specifically Bloomberg Wealth. Bloomberg is one of the largest, most well-established, notable news and and business media platforms on the internet. And in this article, if you subscribe to our channel, much of this you know, they're just basically listing many of the of the big players in 2020 who have come out in support of Bitcoin and who have either gave bullish Bitcoin price predictions or have, you know, they themselves have put some money into Bitcoin because they believe in its store of value properties or its money value in general. And in this article, although I want to focus on Bitcoin for the first part of this video, they're even talking about Ethereum. Many affluent investors such as Arm Brewster believe alternatives such as Ethereum may ultimately prove more valuable. The point is, this is coming from Bloomberg and this whole Bitcoin thing, this whole cryptocurrency thing is only going to get bigger in 2021. We all remember back in May or March, Paul Tudor Jones was one of the first big time investors in 2020 to come out and say, I'm putting one or 2% of my net worth into Bitcoin because I believe in Bitcoin's store of value properties and Bitcoin, since it has a lower market cap than gold or, or art or, or whatever, Bitcoin is the fastest horse in the race. Now he said that months ago, was he doing it for clout? No, he was doing it because he actually believes it and he's still talking about it. There's a big section in Paul Tudor Jones's Q3 investment letter regarding Bitcoin. I'm going to read to you what he is telling investors who subscribe to his newsletter. And, and keep in mind, people who subscribe to him, some of the smartest, most well-informed people on the planet with big money looking to invest. And he's still talking about Bitcoin. He says, Enlisting all the instruments that might respond to the great monetary inflation, the May investor letter postulated that one day Bitcoin might become the fastest horse in the race. He explains that this cryptocurrency is a beneficiary for a variety of reasons. In essence, Bitcoin shares many of the requisite characteristics like known historical stores of value like fiat currency, like gold, like real estate, art, and others. Those characteristics include the protection of purchasing power, trustworthiness, liquidity, portability. And so far, Bitcoin has comfortably taken the lead 
arguably helped by its small initial market cap. Yeah, compared to art, compared to gold, real estate, Bitcoin has a small market cap. In the crypto space, Bitcoin has a large market cap. As Bitcoin gains appeal among investors, there will inevitably be greater regulatory scrutiny, creating bouts of selling pressure, weak hands. This will in turn raise fear that such volatility may undermine the asset's use as a store of value. But one must only look back at the torturous emergence of gold as a store of value to understand the potential path forward for Bitcoin. Remember, Bitcoin's market cap is still only a fraction, less than 5% of gold that's above ground. Nice. The fundamental appeal of Bitcoin is clear. With a finite supply and increasing digitizing finance universe, periods of turbulence and excess are part of that messy, dynamic, and potentially very rewarding process of financial innovation. So Paul Tudor Jones is in it for the long haul, and he's informing people who follow him, hey, this thing looks pretty good. And Paul Tudor Jones is not the only notable entity changing the narrative around Bitcoin. JP Morgan strategist explains how 600 billion could move into Bitcoin over the coming years. A strategist at American bank JP Morgan Chase has suggested that insurance companies and pension funds around the world could invest 600 billion in Bitcoin. Mass Mutual, we reported on this the other day, Mass Mutual's Bitcoin purchases represent another milestone in the Bitcoin adoption by institutional investors. One can see the potential demand that could rise over the coming years as other insurance companies and pension funds follow Mass Mutual's example. So, so TLDR, insurance companies and pension funds could invest $600 billion in Bitcoin over the coming years. For that to happen, institutions in the US, UK, and Japan only need to allocate just 1% of their funds into cryptocurrency just in those three regions. And we reported to you that Massachusetts Mutual Life Insurance Company set an example recently by buying 100 million worth of Bitcoin. See, this isn't that crazy when you think about how quickly the world is digitizing and how quickly the narrative is shifting regarding Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And when you understand what Bitcoin is and why it can't be stopped and how it gains value, you tend to start agreeing with people like this. We're holding Bitcoin all the way up to 500,000. And like you said, we think that's really conservative. That's only if it's a store of value in gold 2.0 and disrupts gold. If it also becomes a payments network, um, the sky's sort of the limit. So, um, you know, we have a huge position, but we're holding, we're not cashing out at all. So that was either Cameron or Tyler Winklevoss. You can never tell with these twins giving their price targets $500 per Bitcoin. They're not selling anytime soon because they're already rich and they can see the bigger picture. And that's what a lot of these whales are doing. Now, that leads us to the question, if Bitcoin is such a sure thing, if we're on the precipice of a huge cryptocurrency bull market, should I take out a loan? Well, let's talk about that. Vitalik Buterin warns followers not to take out personal loans to buy crypto. He says, please don't do things like this. I would never recommend anybody take out a personal loan to buy ETH or other Ethereum assets. It's, that's very responsible. He added that seven years ago, when Bitcoin's future was a lot less certain, before Ethereum even began, I only had a few thousand dollars of net worth. I nevertheless, I sold half of my Bitcoin seven years ago to make sure that I would not be broke if Bitcoin went to zero. So obviously Bitcoin is in this whole other place compared to seven years ago. Its future is a lot more certain. Is it 100% certain? Well, nothing is. Bitcoin is certainly not certain, but it is the least uncertain. I mean, we know that it's way more certain than any other cryptocurrency by far. Now, I'm not saying there's not opportunity for 
major altcoin gains coming up in this in this bull market. I mean, we can see how the narratives are developing. I show you that stuff all the time on this channel. I don't know, just TLDR, don't take out a loan, even though we are seeing some notable Bitcoiners doing it. Peter McCormick, I took out a $46,000 loan today at 8%, bought 2.5 Bitcoin. By 2026, I will have to pay back $57,000. If by the end of 2026, if Bitcoin is at $22,000, Peter breaks even. Is that a good decision? Is that a bad decision? Let us know in the comments below. So let's finish up this video with the lightning round of interesting altcoin news. Vietnam venture builder Red Fox Labs gains an investor ahead of game release. The reason I thought this was interesting, because the investor who is investing in this cryptocurrency project is none other then Mike Novogratz, Red Fox Labs, welcomed the investment by Mike Novogratz led Galaxy Digital Hong Kong Trading, Trading Limited as it prepares for a busy few months, including further venture launches. So Mike Novogratz sees some potential in this coin. Uh, we've always said this is a coin to watch and Mike Novogratz has been known to talk about his investments on TV. So I just thought it was interesting, Mike Novogratz investing in Red Fox Labs. This is still a project that's not really listed on too many uh, exchanges. So, you know, keep it on your radar for sure. Now, I was going to talk, let's just read the headlines. Link Swap hits 20 million value locked as new farmers boost YFL price outlook. Pokestarter launches initial DEX offerings with fixed price tokens. These DeFi projects, they're just like combining names now. Now, you can get into the store yourself. It is interesting what they're doing with the lending and borrowing and decentralized exchanges. The point is DeFi, this metric is total value locked almost at all-time highs, pretty much at all-time highs. DeFi continues to build out, con continues to trend up. So just know that. And finally, Raul Paul sees not just Bitcoin, but cryptocurrencies gathering trillions of value. The CEO of Global Macro Investor proclaimed that the future is a super network of blockchains with the most pristine being Bitcoin. So that was like the most surprising. I mean, Raul Paul on Twitter has just been shamelessly at this point. I'm not faulting him. I'm just saying like he's coming out hard and strong of blockchain and altcoins and uh, if they have real value. Now, when he originally was saying, I'm a huge Bitcoin bull, I think Ethereum is interesting. Ethereum could be a good play. I was like, yeah, that does. That's kind of what I'm thinking too. And you know, now he's just going full blockchain bull. And so that's fine, man. I like different opinions. And I especially like when smart people with different points of view get into it. We need to hash out these conversations. If 99% of the public still has yet to be in cryptocurrency, if Bitcoin cryptocurrency is still such a nascent space, nobody knows the future. And we need to, you know, Bitcoin maximalists shouldn't just talk to other Bitcoin maximalists. They shouldn't just preach to the choir. Altcoiners shouldn't just talk to altcoiners. You know what? A lot of these guys on Twitter, not not Dan or Raul, uh, a lot of these guys preach to the choir. Altcoin Daily, we speak to the masses, and it's a continued conversation. So let me know your thoughts below. It's going to be a great end of the year.